Welcome everyone to another episode of Retro Wrestling Reviews. Fredo Esparza here and this week we look back at World Class Championship Wrestling's June 5th, 1982 show. But before we get to the review, be sure to click that subscribe button. We'll have more wrestling show reviews as well as the Lucha World podcast and other content available on this channel. This episode of World Class Championship Wrestling was taped on May 23rd, 1982 at the Sportatorium in Dallas, Texas. Mark Lawrence is on commentary again. He gave a rundown of the stars scheduled on this week's show. Ken Duck joins Lawrence for an interview. Duck said that spoil- the spoiler talked him into coming to world class to battle the great Kabuki and the Magic Dragon. He mentioned that Kabuki and Dragon have disgraced Asian people in the way they wrestle. He said that they use sticks and illegal holds, and he said he'd do the same against them. The first match on the show had Wild Bill Irwin beating Tom Boogaloo Shaft after a big splash off the ropes got Irwin the pin on Shaft. Irwin controlled the early action against Shaft, attacking his right arm. Shaft shoved Irwin into the corner and fought back. Irwin regained control of the match and continued to kick at Shaft. He went back to work on Shaft's right arm. Shaft makes another comeback and tossed Wild Bill Irwin into the corner, but Irwin responded by using the ropes to choke Shaft. Irwin then went for a pin on Shaft, but Boogaloo got the, his foot on the ropes. Shaft continued to be in trouble with Irwin. Fans cheered for Shaft, who fought back once again. Shaft caught Irwin with a hip attack. Right when it looked like Shaft was turning the corner, Irwin got him with a slam. Wild Bill then followed with a big splash off the ropes and covered Shaft for the pin. The second match on the show had the Great Kabuki and the Magic Dragon with Gary Hart versus Ken Mantel and Ken Duck ending in a double DQ as both teams brawled in the ring. Kabuki sprayed out his green mist and got his hands covered with it. Kabuki missed a chop at Mantel who quickly tagged in Kim Duck. The spoiler showed up ringside holding a candlestick. Duck got Kabuki in a cobra clutch that Kabuki was able to escape. Both attempted kicks. Kabuki then got Kab- Duck in the corner and tagged in the magic dragon. The magic dragon with some hard chops at Duck but, he- but Duck fought back. He was able to tag in Mantel who got caught by the magic dragon with a dragon sleeper but Duck made the save. Duck and Mantel kept getting in and saving each other from the Magic Dragon. Mantel and Dragon go back and forth with some punches until Kabuki got in a chop off the ropes on Mantel. Kabuki then went for a nerve hold on Mantel, and with the fans cheering, Mantel picked up Kabuki and took him to his corner and tagged in Kim Duck. Kim Duck got in some forearms on Kabuki, but Kabuki countered with some thrust kicks. Back and forth with some chops, crowd got fired up. Duck knocked down Kabuki with some chops and went for a pin, but Kabuki kicked out. Magic Dragon got in and kicked Duck and went for the sleeper hold. Mantel made the save again, but the Magic Dragon continued his attack. Duck with a double fist at Dragon and Kabuki tagged in. Kabuki t- continued with some hard chops. Kim Duck fought back with some punches at Kabuki. Kabuki caught Duck with a thrust kick. Kabuki whipped Duck into the corner, but Mantel made the save by placing his body on the corner so to soften the blow for Duck. Duck made a comeback and got Kabuki in a dragon sleeper. All four men got into the ring. The bell rang to indicate that both teams had been disqualified. Duck brought in the candlestick and attacked both men. The spoiler then got involved. Referee David Manning got knocked down. Hart was then able to get his men out of the ring. This was a bit of a wild match, but really, I thought it was a, it was a, it was an okay match at best. That was then followed by Jose Lothario joining Mark Lorenz for an interview. Lothario held said he held the Mexican Brass Knuckles Championship. He said he had beaten all the top Mexican and Puerto Rican wrestlers who had challenged him for the title. While Bill Irwin then interrupted the interview and Lothario excused himself and left. While Bill Irwin then wanted to know why he had to defend the Texas heavyweight title all the time, but he hadn't seen Jose Lothario defend the Mexican Brass Knuckles title anywhere and asked if anyone can answer that question, which he said no one can because Lothario wasn't a true champion. Irwin then said he was no longer associated with Captain Crunch. Of course, he's referring to Frank Dusick. He didn't believe that Dusick was a mental giant and doesn't have a champion's heart. That was then followed by by the next match, which was Jose Lothario and Captain Frank Dusick ending in a double countout. 
Lots of focus early in the match on Lothario teasing that he'd punch Dusik, and Dusik kept telling the referee to watch Lothario's fist. Lothario was able to get Dusik into a hammerlock and then dropped him onto the mat. Dusik had to roll to the outside to escape Lothario. Dusik got back into the ring and got in a few shots at Lothario. Captain Frank got Luthar- Lothario in a headlock, but Lothario reversed it into an armbar and then into a head scissors. Dusik escaped and kicked at Lothario. He followed that up with a knee lift with a few knee lifts, but Lothario countered with a few punches. Dusik struggled to get Lothario up in a suplex, so Jose reversed it and tossed Dusik to the floor. The momentum also took Lothario to the outside as well. Both tried to get back into the ring and that had them counted, continuing the brawl outside. Dusik grabbed the chair, but the referee stopped him. Match ended in a double countout. We then get to the main event on the show, which had Kevin Von Erich beating King Kong Bundy after a crossbody block off the ropes got him the pin over Bundy. Mark Lawrence pointed out that Kevin Von Erich was barefoot for tonight's match and would talk about it a bit more. Um, this was around the time Kevin started wrestling barefoot. I think it was about one or two months prior to that that he started appearing doing um, wrestling barefoot, but um, it became a constant thing that they kept bringing up for a few weeks. Um, Lawrence then said that he asked Kevin Von Erich earlier why he was wrestling barefoot, and, and Kevin told him it was because he was raised barefoot and trained to wrestle barefoot and would do it that night thinking it would add a little more quickness against Bundy. Fans were really into the match from the very start. Bundy shoved Kevin across the ring. Bundy had Armand Hussein in his corner. Kevin got a big forearm across Bundy's back, but Bundy got Von Erich on the ropes and kneed him. He was able to knock Kevin down a few times. Bundy then whipped Kevin a third time, but this time around, Kevin got in a forearm and drop kick on Bundy. Kevin went for the iron claw on Bundy. Referee wanted Von Erich to break the hold because they were on the ropes. They followed for they followed that up for a test of strength with Bundy forcing Kevin down to his knees. Kevin fought back and the fans cheered loudly. Kevin broke out of the test of strength and drop kicked Bundy. Kevin charged at Bundy in the corner, but Bundy got with him with a knee. Bundy then stepped and choked Kevin. Kevin rolled to the outside as Hussein yelled some encouraging words at Bundy. Bundy slammed Kevin on the floor. He dropped a knee across Kevin's chest. Kevin fought back with a big right, but Bundy continued his attack on the floor. They both got back into the ring. Bundy Bundy caught Kevin with an elbow, but Kevin fought back with some punches. Kevin tried for the claw, but Bundy escaped. Von Erich then charged at Bundy in the corner with a big splash, but Bundy raised up his, his knees and knocked Kevin down. Hussein then reminded Bundy about the bonus, um, which was $1,000 if they could take out a Von Erich. Um, Bundy landed a big splash on Kevin. He then whipped Kevin into the corner but missed the corner splash. Kevin then climbed up to the top rope and landed a twisting crossbody block on Bundy for the pin. After the match, Arman Hussein threatened the referee. Referee told him that he was going to fine him if he kept it up. Mark Lorenz then interviewed Kevin Von Erich and brought up the fact that he was wrestling barefoot. Kevin didn't think that was a big deal and said he was more impressed with beating Bundy and hoped to beat him for his belt soon. This was a good show. The tag match and the main event were good. Although, I, like I said, I thought the tag match hovered between the good, okay level. Um, Bundy going back to back weeks against Kerry and Kevin Von Erich showed how good of a heel he was at, the, at this point in time. Again, the Sportatorium crowd was great and were into a lot of the matches. There were a few technical issues during this episode, but they didn't last very long, and it was mostly just affecting a few seconds of the audio. The main event is definitely worth watching. Like I said, I think this show um, was... It, without the crowd being so um, into the show, it probably would have just been an okay, passable type of show, but the fans really made get you into it and kind of like you get the emotion of the fact that they're really into these matches and um, the guys do enough to like get you to captivate your attention. Um, So I thought it was a good show overall. Um, That's it for this review. Be sure to subscribe to the Retro Wrestling YouTube channel and we will be back again soon with more reviews.